Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Look at God. We got the God squad right here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, welcome, 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 everybody. I am Arabella. And I'm Wesley. Amen. We are the Happy Weavers. Yes. Amen. We the Happy Weavers. We are the Happy Weavers. Amen. Hallelujah. We. We really are the happy weavers. I mean, we're kind of, I don't know where that came from. Oh, I happy do. Happy hunters? Yes, I do. We got the happy hunters. Yeah. I, uh, we we're, were the happy weavers. <laughs> <laughs> we were on Facebook one day. Uh, Wesley didn't know anything about Facebook Live, really. And uh, still learning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a, he's a fa Facebook star now. Yes, he is. Everywhere we go, the people run into us, you know, or people come up to us and they say, oh, I see you on Facebook. Thanks, God. So glad to meet you. It's so bless your heart. <laughs> you know, anyway, um, we were on Facebook and um, I had been doing Facebook about a year. And when I met Wesley, a year, year and a half when I met Wesley, and I just said, <laughs> I just said, hello, we're the happy weavers, you know. And every, I was thinking about the happy hunters when I said that. And I, um, so everybody, they think we're the happy weavers now. Amen. We all are. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Isn't that right, God? Joy on the journey. Joy on the journey. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we are excited, super duper excited. We apologize for getting sick, started a little behind, but Holy Spirit showed up and took over this morning. We ain't apologizing for that. I just want you to know. Amen. <laughs> We had a tremendous, tremendous time. I'm excited, excited, super excited about the fact that Dr. Uh, Yolanda McCoon is here and the Stacey yeah. Lacey, amen, is with us. Hallelujah. Yeah. For the next two days. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah. For the next two days. I'm like, yay, God, two days. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so, and, um, She's had a few, she, she, we had this little question and answer thing going on this afternoon, earlier today, and oh man, she answered some, oh man, it was just rich all by itself. Just that little bit was rich, you know? I mean, just get ready for what you're about to get, so going forward. I mean, just pull on heaven, pull on God, pull on God, and he's going to meet your, every one of your needs, amen? We're just super, um, you probably hear me say that 50 times. We're just super, super excited. <laughs> super duper excited. <laughs> amen. Welcome back. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So excited to have you all here. We had just a powerful time this morning. We had uh, these two ladies over here receive their prayer language. We prayed for them yesterday. And this week is strong. My sister back here received got filled with the Holy Ghost he caught it up I shot huh? and I'm gonna tell you what <clears throat> and and she's gonna be here the rest of the week and she kept saying I just gotta get out of here I said it's okay just hang around you know you gonna it's, it's gonna all all that right there gonna just disappear and then <laughs> hang around with these tongue talking folks and I'll tell you what uh, amen, amen. You know, I, you know, one of the most important things that I could ever, if we could ever uh, do or give you or what have you, would be for you to have your prayer language, amen. Because I, you know, you know, the Holy Spirit has the answer. He has the answer. Uh, and if you can pray the Father, allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you the perfect will of the Father on your behalf, what's going to happen? Amen. That's it right there. Amen. So, um, my goodness, you guys just just hunger and thirst. Hunger, hunger, hunger and thirst. Hunger, hunger, hunger and thirst. I mean, in many ways, I feel like what God, what he did this morning was like he put his approval on things. Oh, 
Holy Spirit just showed up the way he showed up this morning. I'm like, mm. he enjoyed, he's here. And he enjoyed being here. Whoa, glory to God. Mm. Whoa, Yes, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God. I say to you, Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 He loves you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, when I look around, I see your need. <laughs> oh, see me get up higher. The Holy Spirit knows. And I, I just see it. You know, I see it by the Spirit. But I see also that the Holy Spirit is here. Amen. God is here to answer and meet your need. Amen. You know, we're not moved by numbers because God always has a remnant. That remnant oftentimes represent others. Yeah. yeah. You get what you need and you're going to share it with more. Because it's going to be so good. Yeah. You ain't going to keep it to yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Yeah. Whoa, Rabbi. Rabbi, I see Canada. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Mm. Hallelujah, Father. We just thank you. We thank you for your presence, oh God. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. So, Nobody but you, Jesus. Nobody but you, Jesus. Nobody but you. Come, hallelujah, and rest. Just rest upon. Mm. Oh, we hunger and thirst for you. We want to have an encounter. We just want an encounter. We've already had one, but you know, more. 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 Yeah. more. Yeah. We want more, Lord. More. Yeah. More, 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 more. More. transportation and the other one had to work they told her she could be off and then they told her she couldn't she, has, she said I want to be here so bad so I said watch it on the live stream don't miss it on the live stream we're praying for Amen. So we don't take it for granted that we're able to be here. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So much. So much. Yes, so much, Lord. Say amen. So much, so much. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. been a shifting, y'all. There's something shifted from last night to today. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. so we can get out of the way. I am so, well, let me, I am so, I'm, I'm just so, I'm just done. I mean, I'm just so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. Like we're, you know, Amen. there was a shift between last night and today. Yes. Huge. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you two ladies over there know what I'm talking about? I give you special care because I just love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness you know your new babies you give them extra care and everything because they ain't tough and rough like you older guys <laughs> oh my goodness I mean you guys were uh, y'all go to the Presbyterian church Jackie used to be my mini me. <laughs> Jackie, I used to 
say half a sentence and Jackie used to finish it. That's how tight it was, you know. And, um, and, and now her and her husband are missionaries to Africa. And when we met, Jackie and I met, her husband wasn't even saved. Mm. Amen. 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 And he really didn't care for me too much. <laughs> he was just a little jealous. He was jealous of Jackie and that relationship, you know. And God just came in and intervened and put him on his knees. Hallelujah. And he called me. Woo, woo, woo! First nation in the house. Hallelujah. knees and he's English, you know, very proper. <laughs> and uh, just dealt with him and he cried out to God all by himself. Got saved and um, came, called me, repented and asked me to forgive him and asked me question after for an hour or so of questions about um, intercession. I just don't understand this intercession thing. <laughs> And he called me, you know. <laughs> and we talked for an hour. He had a bunch of questions. And when we were done, he was just blessed. And he, you know, and God started giving him visions and dreams about ministering to the kids in Africa. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, within six months, they were on the mission field in Africa. Oh, just God. Just God, you know. Oh man, Amen. we all got stories. Let me tell you. But Jackie called me and he says she said she had to be out of state with her father. But Jackie goes, she said, "I'm like, it's just two ladies and they just hungry for God. They just hungry for God." I said, "What's well, up, old Jackie?" You know. And so they called me and and they well, we just oh, we can only come on Tuesday. I said, well, "Really?" <laughs> so I talked with them a little bit and I said, "Well." You really want to be here when Dr. Yolanda's here? <laughs> and I said, so, you know, come back on Thursday, because they had other plans. They go and sing in the nursing homes. <laughs> Ain't that yeah. and, so, uh, and so I said, well, come back on Thursday, you know. And, and they called me back and said, we cleared our schedule. We'll be there the whole rest of the week. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's why they got Holy Ghost and speaking tongues. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm telling you. I am telling you. It just, it just don't get no better. Amen. <laughs> it keeps getting gooder and gooder. But um, um, so we're gonna, we're, Wes and I are gonna move out of the way for real. I mean, like super move out of the way. But we're gonna cover some things because I don't want to. We don't want to necessarily be back up there to do it later. I don't know the fullness of what Dr. Yolanda is going to do. Dr. Yolanda, her, um, I met her in March of this year. She came to a retreat we had in uh, Alachua County at Calagua. It was powerful. It was wild, too. It was really wild. But it was powerful. It was really good. Um, it was around 135 intercessors from throughout Florida was there. And it just, you know, it was just one night. <laughs> I think it was Saturday night. It just kind of, like the Holy Spirit came in and took over. And I'll never forget, Lauren walked up to me, Sissy, Sissy. Lauren was, Sissy was there. Excuse me, Lauren walks up to me and she said, Arabella, what's going on? I said, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, God's having a party, you know? I mean, there was flags and people all, and they were the intercessors was walking all over the place. There was flags all over the place, and it was just like, oh, ooh, yeah. we just got caught up, I'm yeah. telling you. It yeah. was beautiful, beautiful. God sent a professional photographer that was one of the intercessors that came, and she said, you know, I just felt like I was supposed to bring my camera. She took pictures, like over 100 pictures of the whole weekend. She came to me and she said, can I take pictures? I said, what you going to do with them? She said, I'm going to give them to you. I said, amen. Yeah. <laughs> she took, oh my goodness. It was just a real hold down, let me tell you. <laughs> we had a great time. I said, well, thank you for Sissy being in the house. Sissy amen. is um, uh, uh, 
H-A-P-N State Representative, hallelujah, and Diane and somebody else. Read up. Now, we, we, I read it separate. I don't talk about reading it just yet. Was there someone else that came with you? Michelle. Oh, Michelle's coming. Okay. Yeah. And they're from kind of like in the big, they're the Big Ben. Yeah. She has Big Ben Prayer Network. They're, they're, they're in the Ben of Florida, you know, about 13 counties that, um, that come together and meet and pray and intercede for that area. So thankful for them. And, 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 I, and I, I, I don't take for granted anybody being here. So that's why I kind of do it that way. Now, if it was two or three hundred of y'all, I wouldn't be able to do that. But, but it's just a few of us, and I just, uh, I just love Sissy. Sissy is my unity buddy. Yes. Amen. Yes. We, we man unity in Florida. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Amen. I love it. I love it. I can, I, I, we, me and Sissy talk about whatever, whenever, however, and we love each other to the bone. That's my girl, I tell you. And I just love that. Rita is First Nations. She's a, she's special all by herself. And I thank God. She's from Brighton Reservation in, in uh, Seminole, down south, below Okeechobee there, in that mm. area down there. All right. So she's come a long ways. But she um, comes to quite a few of things that we would have you know, in Intercession City and in the area and stuff. And just to uh, really walk with the Holbersons. Sandy and John Holberson are, are, what is it, Prayer, Prayer Walk America. And they literally started down in Miami. And uh, to, God had told them to walk America. They started in Miami. Well, all the way up to Seattle, Washington. Wow. I'm in touch with them. We met them in Tallahassee, and um, Rita, Rita was there with them in Tallahassee for uh, we walked with them, and we walked. Wesley walked with them. Walk with them. Yeah, and they came, um, they came through Intercession City, um, and they are they just crossed over into Oregon. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. December 12th, Amen. December 12th, they'll hit Seattle. Y'all, they, and you look them up on Facebook. Sandy is amazing. <laughs> it's John that's doing the walking, but Sandy is amazing. It's every day she has a word from the Lord for the area, the region she's in. She prays and declares it every single day. You know how powerful that is? You know how amazing that is today? He got he got COVID in Okeechobee, coming up Miami. He got COVID in Okeechobee. And had to go into the hospital and all this. Came out two weeks later, he's back on the road. Amen. Woo! Y'all don't have a sick kid in Okeechobee. I, I mean, y'all need to know it's the real world. It's a real thing. Anyway, real quick. So, there's several things. Praise God. There's several things. Um, one of them is these ladies, there was ladies here, and I talked about receiving the baptism of the Holy, the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and blah, blah, blah. And I mentioned, I'm going real fast, y'all. Y'all, this way, because I'm getting out of the way. Uh, fast forward, I mentioned that um, uh, there's scripture that represents receiving the Holy Spirit. And I went, I told you I was going to bring them. Okay. Yay! <laughs> now, I wanted to give you the word. I, I, I believe in giving you the word pretty much on everything. Amen. And so I wanted to give you the word. These all This is all about the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues and what have you. Um, Deanna has them. She has copies. Make sure to get your copy if you want one. Okay? Uh, make sure to get your copy. Now, listen. All I did was went into the Bible. Because I had a pastor a church that I was attending to, a pastor, one one Wednesday he would talk about, uh, Sunday, one Wednesday he was talking about speaking, Tuesday he was talking about speaking in tongues, and I wonder if it is, and then on Sunday he'll reverse back and say, well, you're speaking in tongues, da, 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 and just turn it all the way around, you know what I'm saying? And I said, you know what, devil, you're a liar. So I went home, and I got, <laughs> I went home, and I, I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't affecting me, but I wanted to say, you know, 
the word says. Right. Amen. Because what would happen is because of the husband I was married to that preached praying in the spirit like all the time. Um, he would come up to us and talk to us and want to know about praying in the spirit and speaking in tongues. Now, I was in a spirit-filled church, and that should not have been the case. But so I went and got, I went and dug in the word, and I pulled up every piece of scripture I could find about praying in the spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit, and praying in the spirit. It's in the word. This is two and a half sheets. It's in the word. So the devil is a liar. Amen. He is a liar. Amen. And so um, I, I really didn't need that because by then I had all I had been living, I had been saved about 30 something years, 36, 7, 8 years then. And I, I didn't need it for me, but because you can't tell me that you are not supposed to speak in tongues. You cannot tell me. Okay? You can't tell me. I'm just saying. I got testimony to it personally what speaking in tongues will do for you. Amen. Amen. I, if I was you, anyhow. So we want to make some real quick announcements because um, we got new people. Everybody going to be back tonight. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're going to be back tonight, we want to make sure you get your envelope, I mean your folder. There's some goodies in here. Okay. And I'll talk about them tonight. Right? Okay. And there's some, what they call merch. I call it merchandise. They call it merch. That's where I started merch. I was like, what in the world? What is that word? But anyway, these are three books that we have um, in there. And there's also some t-shirts. I have on one. Deanna has on one. And God is great. It probably is around here somewhere. And, and all that kind of thing. So you want to make sure to go in and uh, take part. <laughs> she opened her folder. She's like, <sighs> <laughs> oh, you got that one. You know, guys, he got. You see how God have a way of blessing. So he, he he gave her a copy of the tabernacle. That's what she said here. She said she wanted a copy of it, and he gave her the magnet with the magnet on the back of the copy of the tabernacle. And there's also one of Ark of the Covenant, and that's your little gift for you to put on your refrigerator. It says Intercession City. Because uh, God's going to build a life-size tabernacle here in this city Amen. for his presence to dwell in. Amen. 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 So, praise God. Um, Dr. Yolanda has as long as she wants. <laughs> she really does. Uh, um, when, I, when, I, when I'm down, when I'm back there, I'm back there. I'm, uh, I'm not up here. Anymore. We're not up here anymore. We're done. This, this here is a book. Now, Deanna has all the prices and stuff for everything. I really can't tell you off the top of my head. I mean, I could tell you, but it might not be the right price that she has. <laughs> I can tell you a price, but it may not be the same one. But anyway, um, this is uh, this is a book on intercessors. This is intercessor testimonies, okay? And all you guys got, all y'all got good, I know y'all got some testimonies. Y'all need to give me y'all testimony. You do. So I can put it in the book. No, I'm serious. So I can put it in the book. Um, a thousand words or less. Yeah, I know. That's funny, isn't it? I tell you what. Um, this is Wesley's uh, book on Intercession City. Um, it tells you all about Intercession City. Intercession City lives again. Amen. And he wrote this. Uh, been a year and a half now. Yeah. The Lord um, told me, tell Wesley to tell my story. He needs to write the book. Wesley is amazing. And he got on it and I just, just blew my mind. I'm still trying to write the book he told me in 92. <laughs> Wesley wrote <laughs> It's not disobedience. It's not. No. That's what talking about. God's added to it. That's right, mommy. It is not disobedience. Oh, mommy, not mommy. You say that. Yeah, I said that. You probably gonna be in there. Oh. <laughs> Diane Rodabaka is our uh, coordinator for House of Prayer. We dedicated House of Prayer for Intercession City about uh, six weeks ago. Um, John and Jolene was here. Oh, ooh, ooh. my goodness! I tell you what. 
And um, Chris Mitchell. Oh, okay. That was good. Man, I tell you, that was a whole nother world right there. That, that whole, them three was, and it was, you know, just lift you up, fly away. Uh, so, <laughs> so much has happened, you know. I should be writing a book. Somebody told me that, that I should be, we should be actually writing the book of Intercession City and all the stuff. Um, this, the, the Wesley's book is from Intercession City from 37, I mean 34 up to now. And, but somebody told us that we should be writing a book on now. Yeah, right. Yeah. Amen. Well, I do, I do a year in review every year. Good. And I tell you, it's been amazing. Sandy was like, you guys, you're just crazy. <laughs> well, we're just, you know what? Norval Hayes, which is my spiritual grandfather, says in his book called uh, Blessings of Obedience, he says that if you will do what God tells you, if you will obey what God tells you to do every time, you'll be so busy that the devil can't catch up with you. <laughs> That's it right there. You'll be so busy. And, and I don't think he, because ain't nobody keep his pace for God. <laughs> I don't think the devil catch up, can catch up with us. This here, I, I want to mention this specifically. This is Miss Nan. I call her Miss Nan. This is Wesley's uh, former uh, wife. It's beautiful. Um, they were married for 48 and a half years. Miss Nan went home to be with the Lord in 2016. And this book, and, and Wesley helped her write this, but she basically wrote it herself. Um, and it's called Little Arms, Big Heart. And because she was born with a handicap. And it says, born with a birth defect in both arms, she reached beyond her limitations and lived life to its fullest. She, she was born without hands. Um, but she was an amazing woman. Amazing, amazing woman. I never knew her. I just wish I would her. I'm going to meet her in heaven. Amen. Because I gotta, I gotta thank her for training Wesley. Really. <laughs> she did a good job. <laughs> she trained Wesley real good. <laughs> and I'm just thanking God I was next in line. <laughs> yeah, that's volume one of my life. I told by uh, Nan, and then I, I'm starting a new volume. <laughs> Somebody said, well, is this a, a, another chapter in your life? I said, no, it's a volume. It's another volume. <laughs> volume two. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean by that? <laughs> We do have a full life, that's for sure. But it's all God, and we're very thankful. Dr. Yolanda is going to have some materials uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, and I think today we have, you have those? Yeah? I have all of them. Okay. Well, that's my girl. That's my girl. All things. I was, I was tired. I was so tired last night, y'all don't know you know <laughs> yeah you know it's it's you know like this every assignment I don't know about anybody else but every assignment is like a baby <laughs> it's like you get pregnant and you know you got to carry this baby until the till it, it, you push it <laughs> and you push and you push you know and I've been pushing uh, all week and there's an anointing for it. And the thing about the anointing is, you know, the flesh really was not made to be under the anointing 24-7. But it, it resides there to help you get through and accomplish what God has assigned you. And the closer you get to it, the stronger it is. Deanna has seen that firsthand. <laughs> Hanging with Arabella. Um, I experienced it for the first time when we put the tent. Up. Well, we had the Conanea gathering. I stayed up probably about 72 hours. I couldn't even figure out how I was doing it. I never got sleepy, and I was just working. It was just stuff to be done. And I was constantly hearing the Holy Spirit, you know, this, this, this. And um, 
And then before, when it was done, Conan and Gathering was actually three days. But we birthed twins yep. <laughs> right here in this building yeah. in 2018. And but by, by the time Wesley drove out the parking lot, I was passed out. <laughs> I was passed out. I didn't. I don't even know how I got home or anything. I, it was done. And then I, I, I experienced, and then after the tent was up for the first 100 days, and we, you know, that was, that's, that was a whole other world. But anyway, the tent was up for the first 100 days, and we, we uh, and it, was, it came down. I went home, and I was in the bed for two weeks. Yeah, oh, wow. And I shook, and I cried, and I, you know, and I called my spiritual mom. My spiritual mom will be here Friday. She has been, she's trained by Norval Hayes. It was her spiritual daughter for, she was his spiritual daughter for 47 years. She's been mine for 37. And I called her. She has what's called God's Spiritual Hospital and um, God's Military Boot Camp. And when she does boot camp, it's all leaders. She'll have a room like this. And she trains from first, first thing in the morning to late at night. Her whole week. And she told me, she said, honey, when I do boot camp, it takes me a couple of weeks to recover. To just come from under the anointing and be able to be back to my normal self. So she said, you're just coming down from under the anointing of carrying the tent for 100 days. 24-7. Yeah, it was 24-7. So I kind of learned. So I know what's going on. <laughs> I gotta know what's going on. Deanna came in on Tuesday of last week, and she's had a couple of all-nighters with me. <laughs> so last night, though, I was just really, I was kind of tired. <laughs> I was kind of tired, but it was what three o'clock or something like that. Four. Four. She got to bed at four. Four. I, I but she ran me to bed at three. That's what it was. <laughs> She said I was holding her up because I was too tired. She said, <laughs> she said if you could, you know, just, wait a minute, Arabella, push the button, push the button. <laughs> she said, just go to bed. I can push it. <laughs> you know, and so she sent me to bed. And I, and I, I honestly don't know when I got there. <laughs> uh, you know, and so, but, um, but um, it's all part of, listen, then I have these, I call them spells. They're not spells by any means. But I just have these moments of just bursting in tears and praying in the Holy Spirit. And it's for you. It's for you. It's for your deliverance. It's for your healing. God spoke to me. God spoke to me and said, my intercessors need to be free. He said, the body of Christ needs to be free. You're the deliverer of God. Set up for you. What you want me to do about it? I always think, how would you want me to do about it? You, know? <laughs> you God. <laughs> so he said to me, he said, I want you to have a freedom gathering for, for them to be free. He said, how can they pray my will upon the earth if they're praying their pain, their torment, their past, their hurt? I thought he was going to say, for intercession city. You know, but he said, he said, because he needs you to pray your perfect, his perfect will upon the earth. Yeah. His yeah. will. Yeah. His will. Not yours. Yeah. Mm. It's about him. Yeah. His will upon the earth. Yeah. The book Rise Up, One United Voice, where Jezebel Throwdown came out of. In 92, it came, rise up, he said to me. Rise up. Arabella, tell the intercessors to rise up and pray my perfect will upon the earth for the return of Christ. Amen. In 92, I didn't know. I just was like, how am I supposed to do that? I ain't know but three intercessors. How am I supposed to do that? He says, when you pray it, it goes around the world. Amen. And my intercessors hear it. So, I share this because I want you to pull on what God has for you. Because I've been carrying you <laughs> for 
you know, uh, about six weeks. <laughs> That's a quick one. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm glad y'all coming out real soon. <laughs> but anyway, so we're turning everything over to Dr. Yolanda and uh, Stacey Lacey. And they will have the rest of this afternoon. And they will have tonight at yeah. 7 o'clock. Okay? Yeah. Now, make sure, make sure you do not sit here. Receive healing, deliverance, whatever God has for you. You make sure that you sow into the ministry rise up, tabernacle, then I'm going to tell you, if you do not, the manifestation of what you're asking God for will not be long. You will experience it. But what causes it to remain is when you say, yes, God, this is valuable to me. It is, it is so good. I appreciate it. Amen. That's not my revelation. That is actually came. That actually came from Lance Wana. <laughs> that actually came from Lance Wana. He said God dealt with him. He said because he wasn't asking for offerings the way he should. And God told him that when he doesn't ask for offerings, that he is holding up the people's manifestation of the anointing that he just that was just released. I was blown away. There's a need to sow into what God is yes. doing yes. in your life. It seals it. There's a and I I'm, I'm just saying. Listen, I've been where I didn't have but five cents. I've been where I ain't have but a dollar. Thank you, Jesus. I don't ever plan on having those things again. It really don't matter. I don't, I don't think money in, in any form or fashion. But anyway, I'm just saying, I've been where I have a $5 in my pocket, and I gave it into, what, 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 five, what $5 going to do anyway? So, I mean, you got three children with $5. So I gave it to God, because now he's got something to multiply with. I put a seed in, now God can bring forth a huge harvest. If you don't ever put a seed in, what you gonna get? What are you gonna get? Seed, time, and harvest. What are you gonna get if you don't put a seed in the ground? I don't care if it ain't but a dollar, a dime, you know. But some of y'all need to pull out your checkbooks or your your credit card and go ahead on and get the ten thousand dollars that God told you to do. I'm just saying. You just need to obey God. <laughs> we had some, we've had people to do that. That's how we're able to put an offer on a piece of property now Amen. for the tabernacle. Woo! I'm telling you. And great shall be their reward. Amen. Great shall be their reward. They are not sowing in. See, you know what? You're not. It's not even sowing into brick and mortar. We're not building it like we're not. We're not building a museum. I ain't got time for no museum. We're building the tabernacle. The way if we already got the person, the person that made and built our tent, it's an amazing man. I really want him to do it before he go home with the Lord. So, because yeah. <laughs> he's about seventy-seven years old, but he's still building tents. Um, um, he built our tent. Beautiful. He said, "Oh, I put you some crosses on." I'm like, "Praise God!" I mean, we didn't know nothing. We you know we know. But he built that thing. He had it up in three days. I'm wow. so serious. And he's waiting. He's just waiting on us. We've already talked to him about it. He's going to do the whole tabernacle. Oh, he's building the whole thing. Oh, yeah. He's building the courtyard. Yeah. He's building the tabernacle. And he's going to put like a clear dome over it so it can protect the furniture and everything from the elements. Wow. But it's not going to have one lock on it. Not one. You don't have to. That's right. That's right. You don't have to. We had the tent up for 214 days and, and it was wide open. We had all our sound equipment out there, microphones, everything. Nothing ever lost, never ever stolen. Nothing ever stolen. God's presence. The angels was there. So, and aside from that, if you, we, <laughs> they had put so much oil around that tent that if you tried to steal anything, you're going to slip down and fall. <laughs> Oh, 
so much all. It was so much that you would see little brown spots. We could talk to all that was in the ground. <laughs> I am just saying, it's the truth. Praise God. Come on, you, you guys are welcome to come. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dr. Yolanda. someone's heart to uh, ask you to come and be a part of what he's doing. And um, when Arabelle called me and she said, you know, the Lord has revealed to me that his intercessors need to be set free. And I said, duh. <laughs> I mean, you know, who is the first line, right? And so what, what came over me is that uh, that's where God started me on my spiritual journey was as an intercessor. And so what we're going to attempt to do, Stacy Lacey is my director for healing and deliverance at my apostolic center. And um, as we've just sought the Lord, this is, this is our heart. We want to first, I want to first today just give you testimony because I was that intercessor that didn't need help you know I had it all together quote quote till I didn't or till I prayed and then it came even worse and then I you know it goes on and on so I want to today talk about that but I also what we are going to do is we're going to hand you out at the end of my talk um, some handouts and what these are, these are tools that we use in our healing and deliverance center. And this is going to be like a questionnaire for you. And so what we will want you to do is read all those different things that are just listed and circle or check the ones that just hit you. I don't want you to think about it a long time because if you think about it, you'll talk yourself out of it or into it. Because we're not going to take an evaluation of how many of you have each one. But what we do want you to do is begin to recognize some of the things that go on in you physically and soul and spirit that are directly related to things that need to be healed. They are directly related to things that need deliverance. Okay? So tonight I've asked Stacy, and she's going to go over that. I'm going to give you a kind of a pre- Tonight, she's going to deal with rejection. Mm. Rejection is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, that we deal with. Because everybody has it. Nobody's without it. Some of you have multiple layers of it. And we could go on and on. We're also going to, uh, she's going to give you some other tools. And that's why I've had her come in in the evening. And we'll just do that personal ministry and work people through. Freemasonry is another thing that you need to know about. And you need to understand what are the tools you have and is it possibly affecting you? And she's going to deal with that tonight. Tomorrow, I'm going to, we're going to start digging deeper into inner healing. And I'm going to do uh, PowerPoints and help you understand what is actually happening to you when you pray. How is it affecting things? And how is specifically the correlation between things that you don't have rid of yet and how that's affecting your prayers. And then we'll just have to hear from the Lord tomorrow night to see where he's going to go because we've got several other things that we know the Lord's saying for us to do and we're just trying to be obedient. So I want to start, and, and I literally am giving you parts of my testimony as an intercessor. Um, I was one of those people that was raised in a denomination that didn't let Holy Spirit do anything except convict you of the need to get born again. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. 
And so my whole understanding of Holy Spirit was literally that he was supposed to convict me of sin so I would pray the born-again prayer. Now, after that, he wasn't really involved in anything. Uh, he wasn't allowed to be involved in anything. So what I'm going to show you is I tell you the truths of what I thought. I'm going to bring into you the truths of where he took me. So for that truth, he began to show me there is a fixed truth. Okay, This word of God is called the fixed truth. It means it's stable. It's consistent. It's always there. It's never going to change. It's always going to be there. But how many of you know that when you begin to delve into the word, when you begin to meditate and pray on the word, what happens? You get a deeper revelation of that truth, right? Yeah. Well, what happens is the only way you get a deeper revelation is by the moving truth coming over you and helping you dig deeper. And the moving truth is Holy Spirit. And the moving truth is prophecy and words of knowledge and all those things that Holy Spirit is part of. So if you have a group that says, we're only going to do the fixed truth, there will be no moving truth coming in, then you don't get to go deeper. You don't get to dig deeper. You don't get to be in that place. And so that's what happened to me. I was born again, prayed that prayer at 12. And from 12 to 30, I lived in this world where I could probably safely say I felt God touch me three times. Okay. Uh, one was in a revival. One was in a real emotional prayer. How many of you can relate? Amen. Emotional prayer time. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know. So I did everything. I was Miss Goody Tissues. Let me make that clear. Okay. I did all the church jobs, I did all these things, and, you know, married the love of my life. Matter of fact, in January, we'll celebrate 50 years of being wow. together. So, everything was like this, you know, little perfect thing that was going on, but nothing moved. Okay. But everything that I did, and I, I was um, in education and academia and had a lot of degrees and things like this, but it just wasn't, I don't know, it just wasn't quite there. And I have three sons, we do, and um, everything was going okay until I absolutely got fed up with everything. Anybody ever been there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. I realized that I didn't relate to my husband. He was a workaholic. Um, we didn't have, you know, we had kids in common. We lived in the same house. Um, I was busy doing a lot of other things, and I kept trying to bring God into it. But God couldn't come into it because I didn't have a space for God. Yeah. Yeah. All right? So God gave me, at 30, he literally took me through the baptism of the Holy Spirit at a camp where you weren't even allowed to say Holy Spirit. Wow. Are you getting that? Wow. They still haven't recovered. <laughs> <laughs> and when he did, I thought I was the only one on the planet. No one had ever told me you yeah. could get this. Yeah. You know, so I decided, surely I'm another Moses. All right, because of this. <laughs> you know, something. <laughs> and God said, no, not so much. Um, you're just progressing where you need to go okay and so he had already given me Isaiah 60 and for those of you that know it it's the one that says arise and shine for the life has come and the glory and what I began to understand is God wanted to shine light inside of me now up to this point remember I miss goody two shoes you know, I don't sin. Are you hearing me? I don't have any sin in me. You know, I didn't do this, this all the things we all think of. All right. It's a lot harder to get us goody two shoes people cleaned up yeah. than people that really have gone through stuff. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because we don't know we even got stuff. All right. 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 
So that was the trick with God, is he began to shine his light into me and show me my stuff. <laughs> okay. And this light, he kept saying, he kept drawing me to Ephesians over and over again. And finally he said, you know, we're going to walk through all of Ephesians and I'm going to get you cleaned up. And I'm thinking, you know, I don't do those bad things. What on earth is there to clean me up on? Yeah. And then he began to show me. <clears throat> uh, one of the things that he showed me is my thinking. And we'll talk about that more tomorrow. But my thinking was so messed up. I had so many religious ideas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he's, I said, when I got born again, all that stuff went away. And he goes, have you looked at your life? How's that working for you? Did all the problems go away? Did all your junk go away? Did all your bad thinking go away? I mean, did it? No. Did you guys get born again and it was all just gone? No. No, no they didn't tell us about that, did they? No. I was a little unhappy about that. And I found out there's this word called soteria or sotera. And it's actually the Greek word that says salvation. And do you know what it means? You know, in the scripture it says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Well, we don't ever quote that. Yeah. Okay, because that sounds like we have to do something to get salvation. That's, what it meant. Yeah. That's not what it meant. Right. It meant once you pray the Zoe born again prayer, now you have access to start working on you. Amen. Because salvation is like all these steps yeah. Yeah. to get rid of the junk in you Amen. and receive his junk that's so good. <laughs> okay. But we can't do that if we don't realize we have that. Amen. So in Soteria, it means to stop the molestation of the enemy. Jesus. My God. And I was like, am I being molested? Yeah. And that's when my journey started. Yeah. I'm literally being hit with things that I didn't even realize are hitting me. Yes. When I would have anger that came out of nowhere. Amen. Or I would have frustration. Amen. Or I would be wounded by a pastor. Yeah. I didn't realize this was something other than human. Yeah. And that's when he began to show me this whole other world. The way he showed it to me was <clears throat> he took my sons. Now, at that time, they were like four, five, and six. All three of mine were born under three. So I had a one-month-old, a one-year-old, and a two-year-old. Okay. Um, which establishes great levels of patience and insanity. <laughs> so... Uh, when they were like four, five, and six, this is when I went through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he began to show me, and he said to me, he said, you know, you have enough education to understand that if you have a really controlling mother, a domineering mother, and she overwhelms the whole family, that boys raised in that will not grow up to be the men I want. And I go, well, yeah, but that's not me. <laughs> and he goes, oh, yeah, it is you. You know, the thing with Holy Spirit is he starts talking back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before, it was just a one-sided conversation. <laughs> you talked to God, but you didn't really hear anything. Yeah. Suddenly, you're hearing stuff. Okay, and you're like, no, I rebuke you, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> no. Didn't sound like what I think. So he said, I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, you were taught by your family to put your children before your husband. You were taught that the children were all family was about. And you were taught that you deny your things that you may need from your spouse so that you can meet the needs of your child. And I said, well, Lord, that's correct, isn't it? He goes, no. And I go, what? He goes, I created the family so that the love for a husband and wife is stronger. Yeah. I want you to hear me, parents. Yeah. 
is stronger than the love for that child. And I go, no way, can't be. I mean, Gary's a big boy. He's on his own, okay? Hello. He messed up, and he's, it's his problem. It's not my problem. And he goes, yeah, that's what that one thing means. His problem is your problem. Your problem is his problem. And he said to me, what you have done is you've put your sons on a pedestal. And he said, do you want to know what that's called? And I go, well, I guess. You know, honoring them, respecting them, you know, treating them with preciousness. He says, it's idolatry, my dear. Yes. Yeah. Are you listening? Yes. That was my first introduction to Holy Spirit deciding I needed deliverance. And he said to me, I cannot protect them because what you have done is opened a door to the enemy by putting them on that pedestal. Are you listening? Yeah. And he's, I said, oh, no, no, no. That's not. He goes, because of that, they will not honor their father. They will not respect their father. And they will not come into the men that I planned for them to be. God. Are you hearing me? And we're just talking. I'm the best mother on the planet. Why is that bad? Because, see, in my mind, yes, I was a good mother. Everybody thought I was a good mother. But they were my friends focus. They were my everything. Okay. So what Holy Spirit said is you must take them off that pedestal. And you must put me on the pedestal. <laughs> and then Gary gets to be second. I'm like, oh, Lord, have you met Gary? <laughs> you know, he doesn't think right sometimes. <laughs> He sometimes he doesn't even talk when I'm talking to God. I mean, you know, he doesn't respond. I mean, and God says, you are one. Let's work it out. So the next thing that happened when God began, I just want to give you snippets of where my life, where he kind of messed me up. The next, next messed me up was I had been in the presence of God for years because at 30 he called me to be an intercessor. So my favorite thing on the planet was going into the bedroom of God. How many of you understand? Let's just be here together. Let's not let the children in. Let's not let Gary in. Let's just be here together, okay? Let's not let all the crazy academia people and pediatricians that I was training, let's not let them in. Let's just be in here with the presence of God. And he said to me, because when I would be with him, it was the most love I'd ever felt. But I just kept feeling like it wasn't what he was sending. It wasn't what he was sending. It was just what I was getting. Okay. And so he gave me this picture of a PVC pipe. And he said, Yolanda, you are at the bottom of this PVC pipe. And at the top, I am literally pouring out 100% of everything I want you to have. All your protection, all your blessings, all the love you need, all the everything you need, I'm pouring it out. And he said, but down here at the bottom, you're getting drips like a leaky faucet. And he said, all you keep doing is saying, God, I need more. And he's saying, I'm giving you 100%. But see, I couldn't see what was in between. I just realized I wasn't getting enough, okay? That just wasn't enough. And then he opened my spiritual eyes and let me see that within my PVC, PVC pipe were these filters, were these blocks, were these barriers that were keeping him from getting to me. Are you listening? Because in my mind, he'd take everything away. He gave me permission to take it away. Salvation. He gave me permission that if I didn't want to have a poverty mindset, I could say, that filter with the poverty mindset, I don't want that anymore. 
rip that out of there. Because when that's gone, guess what comes to me? Provision. Provision. So he began to show me in those things. And I had been crying out to him because I had thought I was just in the middle of his greatest presence and love. And I could feel it and I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave that presence. And this is what's happened to the body of Christ in a lot of places. We would call that bedroom worship. Okay? If you go into the presence of God, it's like bedroom worship. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's intimate. Yeah. It's there. It's just you and, and God. It's just so powerful. But it's intimate bedroom worship. God does not want us to exist only in the bedroom. He's got to have us come out and be a part of the rest of the house. So sometimes I may have to worship in the kitchen, which I'm being fed. Okay. Sometimes I might have to worship in the bathroom where I'm cleaning up and getting rid of stuff. You get my point. Uh -huh. yes. And sometimes, when that's all at his level, I might have to go in the living room and worship him in front of the world. Mm -hmm. Taking it to the world. And what he said is, I'm going to give you those bedroom times to build you up. But then I'm going to give you the bathroom times to get the filters out. Yeah. Then I'm going to give you the kitchen worship so you can get trained and taught and receive what you must have. Because when I send you to the living room, you better be ready. Okay? Because that's where the enemy gets to release as much against you as he can. So when that it was in mind, when I would be in the bedroom, I had never really been in some of those other places, and I said to God, God, I just don't feel your love. And I, I'm being brutally honest. I don't feel your love. Well, if we want to be really honest, I don't feel Gary's love. Now, if you all met Gary, he's like the sweetest, disgustingly teddy bear nice. You know, he's just a really, isn't he? Yes. I mean, everybody at my Apostolic Center loves him a whole lot more than they love me. <laughs> <laughs> they just do. Because he's Gary the teddy bear. He's the dad. He's the one that hugs them. He's the one that loves them. He tells them they're all nice and doing good. And I'm not so much. <laughs> so when, when this is in our relationship, and I didn't feel his love. Are you hearing me? I didn't feel it. And God says to me, do you really believe I'm not sending you my love? And I says, well, obviously you need a new zip code or something because I'm not feeling it, okay? I'm just feeling this pressure. And I, he says, do you really think Gary's not sending you his love? And I go, yeah, I don't feel it. It's like a lot of times when he talks to me, it's like a knife got stuck in me and twisted. And he goes, that's because it's one of those filters, those barriers. And this is what he showed me. He said, Yolanda, for your entire life, you have taken wounds and painful memories, especially relating to men, okay, and all the times you were criticized because you were a girl, and girls can't do that. Or you were a woman and women shouldn't do that. <coughs> and he said, you've taken them and you've made them into these lovely rocks. All right? And then you've taken these rocks and you've built a complete wall around you. Mm -hmm. Over you, under you, completely. And he said, you used the enemy's tools to build that wall. Everybody getting me? Yes. He said, it is a Leviathan wall. He says, every time somebody speaks to you, they must go through that wall. And since you used Leviathan's tools, 
to build the wall. He gets to decide what you hear. And he said, and your particular wall was built because you didn't feel loved. So every time someone like me, God, speaks love to you, no matter how powerful it is, because you still have that in place, the enemy gets to decide what you hear, what you feel. Are you hearing me? And so he said, that's why you don't feel Gary's love. Oh, he's loving you. He said to me, would Gary give his life for you? And I go, well, yes. He goes, is that someone that doesn't love you? You know, you're going, duh. Okay. But Lord, it doesn't feel like he loves me when he talks to me. Gary would walk in the house every evening. Now remember, my kids are at this age probably six, seven, eight. But all the years that he'd walk in every night, he would walk in the door. And he'd look at me and he'd say, hi, babe, how was your day? And every time I heard the condemnation, what on earth did you do today? The house is a mess. The kids aren't dressed. Supper isn't made. And you just think it's all because you've got so many kids at such an age. And what happened was... Then his words, how was your day, would come through my Leviathan wall and they would become a dagger and a knife. And I'm speaking to a lot of people. And it would stick inside of me and then it would almost twist, mm -hmm. like to just give it one more thing. Now he's sitting there, none of that's his intention. None of that's what he said. None of that's what he did. He's loving on his poor wife, who's a fruit loop. Okay. And we all praise God that he survived, and I survived, and he stayed with me. Because I probably wouldn't be alive if he wasn't, to be truthful. Because I stir up a lot of stuff. <clears throat> so he, um, I said, well, God, get rid of the wall. I mean, you prayed that. Get rid of this mountain. Get rid of this wall. Take that away. And God said, I didn't build it. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, what exactly do I need to do to get rid of the wall? And he's basically gave me the same steps that we're going to share with you a million times. Repent. Say, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was building a wall. Ask for forgiveness. And I ask in the name of Jesus and with the power of the blood and Holy Spirit, help me take down this wall. Mm -hmm. But before I did, you guys have to understand, I argue with God a lot. You'll figure that out. What are we putting in its place? You know, because that was a really good wall. Very strong, sturdy, unbendable. Very little could get through in my mind. He says, we're putting the blood of Jesus. Ooh, that's kind of flimsy. You know, it's like watery. Are you sure that's going to be enough? Because I didn't understand the power of that blood. So what he did was he said, where's your faith? Will you do this? So I tore down the wall in one day. And that night when my husband came in and said, can you imagine how many years he's been saying on eggshells, oh, hell, you know, how was your day? <laughs> you know, never knowing what kind of reaction he's going to have. Okay. You know. So he walked in and he said, hi, babe. How was your day? And instantly, all the love that this man had had for me forever and ever suddenly came through that blood sheet because now the other wall was no longer there to stop it. And I was so consumed for the first time in my life with a passionate love for my beloved. Do you hear me? 
So when that happened, I could just hear Holy Spirit just rejoicing. He says, well, now maybe you'll feel some of mine. <laughs> and that began a huge journey for me. So I know that many of you have a Leviathan wall. You have lots of barriers, lots of things in between. <clears throat> and the word is pretty clear that it's the love part that's going to help overcome that. So in Ephesians chapter um, 4 or 3, Paul talks about learning to love to the overflow. So this is really my prayer for what we're going to be bringing you this week. Uh, we can show you some of those filters and barriers, and we're going to talk a lot about them. Generational curses, sin you don't know is there, sin you have received because you walked on a certain land. Okay, you got to realize the enemy has a really toxic environment. Every place that has not been clean. We know that Jesus did the final work. He's done it all. There's nothing he has left to do. But his instructions to you and I were I am giving you authority to basically kick the enemy out of where he has squatted or stayed. Amen. And so if you don't have that mindset, you're waiting for Jesus to come back and rescue you. Mm -hmm. Instead of you getting cleaned up, mm -hmm. taking your authority, and going out and kicking the enemy out. Right. Okay, there's a difference. So we're going to show you some of those things. But this is, I want you to hear this, uh, and I'm reading out the Passion Translation. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father, of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect father of every father and child. Actually, that Greek word is meaning very much family and father are very close. So that should be your source of where you're getting this, of every child in heaven and on earth. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory. This is what we're missing. The enemy has cloaked in deception, trickery, uh, all the things he can. This level and dimensions of glory. And you think, here I am trying to obey God and intercede and do what I need to do, but I can't because I'm somehow hindered because I don't see these filters. I don't see these barriers. But they keep wiping me out. They keep wiping out family members. They keep stealing from me. And I think, well, I'm really hitting something. There was a season where they taught backlash. I'm going to say this, and I'll probably get information back. <laughs> <laughs> backlash is not from God. Amen. Amen. Backlash was a false religious thing that said, Look how good your prayers are that you got hit like that. Wow. Mm. Okay. That's not what God says. Okay. Jesus already paid for all this. Yeah. There should be no backlash. Yeah, amen. That's right. Amen. The only reason a lot of times there is backlash is because you went and tried to touch something that's still in you. Please hear me. If it's in you or in your lineage or in you, you can't kick it out. Yeah. I can give you a couple of quick examples. One is we had a horrible time getting any traction uh, on getting rid of abortion. Horrible time. I mean, we've done everything. We've prayed everything. We've done, I mean, we've oiled it, squeaked it, done whatever. It wasn't until it was made known to us that literally every vaccination has fetal hearts, has fetal hearts yeah, in it yeah. from an aborted fetal mm -hmm. tissue. Mm -hmm. So when that frequency is now in you and you try to come against it, the enemy has an open door to come back and minister to you. Yeah. Jesus. 
So we, many groups, when that became knowledge, prayed and said every human being in America, okay, that has had that vaccination, we apply the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the frequencies of those abortive tissues may no longer speak to us. Are you listening? Okay. We see it happen in the scripture a lot, and I'll give you an example. Um, all of us know David. I mean, he's like the Sunday school king, okay? You want to teach something, you teach David. You know, the little shepherd boy, the guy who kills the lion, da 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 Well, you may not have put all the pieces together, but you remember when Samuel came to find the king, okay? And he came to Jesse and says, bring all your sons. Because one of them I'm supposed to anoint. Yeah. And he brought all his sons, didn't he? Yeah. And Samuel went down the row, and none of them were the ones. Oh. And he said, well, where's your, is this all your sons? And he goes, well, I kind of have one <laughs> that's out in the field. Now, you know, that's kind of weird. Why was that one not considered one of the sons? Well, when you go and look at the history of it, you find out that David's father, Jesse, had had an affair, an adulterous relationship with another woman, and David was the result of it. Now, he was allowed to be with his father, but he wasn't trained like the other boys. Because, see, he was another are you getting this? Yeah. But the conception of David was a sin. A generational sin that was passed down. And even though David was a friend of God, honored him, loved him, did everything, he, at one point, the enemy still had an open door. That open door was sexual sin. And what was David's greatest sin? His greatest sin was Bathsheba. Because of the general. What happened to his sons? You getting it? So a lot of times, these are things that are in us. We're just not aware that they're in us. I'll give you another example of what happened with me. But one season in my life, I was working with human trafficking victims, praying for them, just trying to rebuild trust. Now, psychologically, if you want to rebuild trust once it's broken, it would take between a husband and wife a good five years of counseling. Are you listening? Yeah. yeah. Um, in my world, I don't have five years to give you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you need to get yours quicker. Okay. <laughs> but when I would work with these human trafficking victims, their PTSD scores are like way off the charts past what some soldiers go through. Okay, you, you just can't even imagine. Because it's an intimacy betrayal as well as other things because of the spiritual connection. So as I prayed for them and did that, the more I would pray for these um, girls, the more I became very much like them. Mm. Systematic, okay? Um, I would have the same behaviors. I would have the same thoughts. I would begin to not care about myself or my family. And in my mind, I kept thinking, well, I'm doing identificational intercession. You know, this is where God will give you a word of knowledge about someone and you'll feel their pain or you will know what's going on with them because of something you need to know inside of them. So I'm thinking that's what this is. He's just showing me so I can pray better, so I can do this. But with intercession that's identificational, it should not remain. It's just there for, to give you the information. And then it gets full. But with me, it didn't get full. And it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And it was so bad, my husband was saying, you know, babe, what's wrong with you? And I go, I have no clue. 
I said, if I didn't know better, I'd say I'm acting like these abused girls. So, you know, it took me, I'm, I hate to admit this, it took me a long time to ask Holy Spirit, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, that should have been my first question, but, uh, you know, you get so religious. <laughs> and uh, I so finally said, Holy Spirit, what's going on? And he said to me, you have an open door. Well, I have never been sexually abused, never had anything like and I said, well, Father, how could I have an open door? He says, it's in your lineage. It's in your generation. In your family, they not only trafficked people, but people in your family were trafficked. And he said, you tried to get rid of something in somebody else that was in you. And so because of that, the enemy could come back and go, tag, you're it. Are you hearing me? A lot of you have touched in intercession things that have come back on you, and you've said, what on earth? But it's because of these open doors that are still in us that we need to shut. We need to get rid of so that they can't do that. So those are examples. So again... It's really hard to get rid of this stuff, right? It's not. The enemy wants you to think you're going to do an exorcist or something. Okay, that's not what it is. It's so simple. You repent. You ask for forgiveness. You renounce it or repudiate it. Get it out of you and say, Father God, however far back we need to go in my lineage to where they did this, I said, go back. I don't know how far back it is. I don't even know who they were. But you go back. And I ask forgiveness for them opening that door. Amen. And then I take with the authority I have and shut that door. Right. So it can no longer be used as the devil comes in and touches me. And from that day on, it didn't matter what I prayed for. Because they couldn't touch me. Another thing that I encourage you when you're looking at this, is, let me finish reading again what he's saying. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. That is supposed to happen all the time. It is not happening because we've got these filters in place. So his glory cannot manifest on the same power level that these encounters with the enemy are at. Because we got to get cleaned up so we can handle that kind of power flowing through us. And then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source of and the root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences. And that's the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. We are so hung up in three dimensions. God has hundreds of dimensions. And the filters that you operate in when your intercession is going, you are trying to enter in those other dimensions. And you're being blocked because of these filters and barriers that we have in you. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love, how enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measure that transcends our understanding. This will mess with you. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. So never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all. For his miraculous power 
constantly energizes you. Wow. Do you hear? So, they're always going, somewhere in my early religious training, I thought, you know, once you get on Jesus' side, you're in la-la land, okay, and so things don't happen. I assume most of you all aren't in la-la land, because bad stuff still happens, right? Bad stuff happens, okay? And <clears throat> this is a war. Revelation. This is a war. Too many of us are trying to fight this war on this plane or this level. So when we see the demons surround us or they come into us, we're just overwhelmed. I mean, you know, there's no way God can save America. Have you seen it? Because we're looking here. But the word's very clear about we are supposed to come up higher. We're supposed to come up and be seated with Jesus yeah, where he is yeah, and look down on this. Yeah, that's right. And look down and say, that's right. now what's the battle plan here? <laughs> okay. If you're an intercessor and you're hunkered down and they're all coming at you, you're in the wrong place. And you've got to come up to these other dimensions. You've got to be aware. Because then you look down and you go, oh, I see the demons, but good Lord, look at all the angels that are coming right behind them about to take them out. It's a different, it's a different kind of thinking. <clears throat> well, over today and tomorrow, we're going to teach you some of the ways to recognize those filters and those barriers, some of the ways to utilize them so you can be the victor. Satan cannot create anything. Amen. Write that down somewhere. Put it in your head. Get rid of all the stuff that comes against it. Say it again. Satan cannot create anything. He can only pervert what is created. That's right. And because of that, if you have that truth, there is only one creator God. And if you have that truth, then you will stop throwing out the baby with the bathwater. When you see Satan using something, instead of you saying, well, that's evil and we don't want to touch that, the question you need to ask is, what's original design? What's the original design of that? How do we get past our things? I can remember when um, God wanted to shift worship music. And he wanted to do something really insane like bring in horns and trumpets and, <laughs> and you know, drums and guitars. And, yeah. I'm old, okay? I'll be 69 next month. So, hello. Oh. I've been there for a while. <clears throat> so, I can't remember that battle. <gasps> That's not holy. The Lord can only be worshipped with an organ. <laughs> Y'all been with me? Yeah, amen. The Lord, well, maybe you can throw in a good pianist if she can stay with the organ. Yeah. But heaven help us all if you bring in drums. Because drums are used as a perversion of evil. <laughs> Now, some of you young things have no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, praise God, some people finally reversed on through yeah. <laughs> and let God have the instruments he wanted to have. Yeah. Steel guitar. Oh, my heavens, God can't use a steel guitar? Have you heard that awful, awful, evil music? <laughs> yeah, it's a guitar. The guitar isn't it. It's who plays the guitar. That's right. Okay. The guitar isn't the problem. It's who's playing the guitar. Amen. Because there's only two power sources, period. Yes. One is God and one is Satan. So if you think like that, what begins to change is your understanding of frequencies. And that's well, you know, that's a teaching for another day. But quantum and understanding frequencies. Absolutely everything is light. Yeah. Absolutely. 
or the absence of light. Yes. It all has a frequency. Yes. I mean, cancer has a frequency. Yes. Do you want that frequency to stay in your body? No. no. So everybody's trying to get rid of that frequency. Mm -hmm. But God says you've got to repent and get rid of that frequency yes. and then put the right frequency back in. Right. It's just a different way of thinking. So let me give you another example of how God, I mean, I could, I've had a lot of years, over 39 years now, where God took me through intercession assignments. Okay. When I was training different teams to go, um, there was a boot camp experience, but it was training them so that I didn't hurt them. Because too many people go out to do these assignments that don't have the understanding of what they're up against. Right. And you actually do a disservice to them if you take them out. Uh, we have been coming against uh, different ministry teams that I've worked with in the past against things like Freemasonry and a different Islam and abortion and all these things. We've been coming against them. So if I take someone on my team that still has that in them, they're going to be able to be wounded. They're going to be able to be hurt or taken out. So you've got to care enough about your team that you want to do that. And you want to be, you know, even though you look like the big, bad, man, you know, mean person, you have to love them enough to say, you know, I'm not taking you. That's right. Until you get this out. That's right. Exactly. Amen. Amen. And I don't That's care right. if you are the pastor. <laughs> you better say it. You better say that. Okay. Amen. I don't care if you're the pastor. I don't care if you're the worship leader. I don't care if you're the head of the intercession. Amen. Okay. Amen. It, it really doesn't matter. What matters is what's still sounding inside of you that the enemy can use. That's right. That's and right. From the day he brought Holy Spirit into me till today, I get delivered all the time. Yes. Amen. It is a constant deliverance. Thank you. It is a constant inner healing. Thank you. It's not a one and done. Okay. And it's not somebody at the front of the church casting six demons out. Amen. That does not mean you've arrived. It just means you have six lefts. <laughs> See the difference. Okay. You got to realize that. So many times I did not realize what was in me because it was hidden. It's familiar. Most of these come when you are conceived. When I was conceived, all the generational curses from my father and from my mother were automatically given to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I thought the things that happened, this is just the way it is. This is the way I think. This is the way I respond. This is the way I am. Okay. It's just me. You know, y'all can take me or leave me. I don't really care. It's just the way it is. Hmm. How many times have they said things to you like, Acting just like your mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, those were fighting words when Gary would say that to me. Mm -hmm. You're acting like your mother. And it wasn't that he was upset about it. It was that I was upset mm -hmm. about it. Okay. He was like, you know, you're saying the same stuff she says to you that you get upset about. Uh -huh. Surely not. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to give you one of the probably the hardest, most difficult things that I had to get delivered from, and, and it's bringing to you the peace of not only deliverance, but the peace of inner healing. <clears throat> uh, of Gary's and my three sons, we, um, they all are just like totally different. I used to tell people they're like daylight, nighttime, and twilight. Okay, And I don't know how they got that different being raised that close together because it was all the same it was like that <clears throat> but the middle child was my most challenging 
uh, as often they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can know too much in education. You can understand, okay, you're the middle one. You're going to do this, 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 and this. And so I'd have to constantly remind myself, did the Lord say that or were you taught that? Okay, you need to put that in your thing. Did the Lord say this? But this particular child was strong-willed to levels that most people have never seen. And he wasn't mean. He wasn't defiant. He was just a lot of questions. And so if you took it, you would sit there and go, are you challenging my authority? I'm your mother. Okay. He goes, no, I just really want to know. Why are we doing this? Okay. A lot of you have had those kind of things where they're not really coming against you. They're just wanting to know. You know why are we doing this? Is there a reason behind this? And when I would say, because I said so. Well, that really went well. You know. Okay. So this was my question, child. This was also the child that was so much closer to the Lord than I was. All right? Supernaturally. That much closer. He was born again and spirit-filled at fire. Um, he was... Just always, he had a t-shirt that was his favorite t-shirt that said, if you're not walking on the edge, you're taking up too much room. Mm -hmm. okay. So that was our life. The other two were just, you know, I could change my voice and then obey. Uh -huh. This one, not so much. <laughs> this one was pushing me all the time. When he was a teenager, he said to me, what's this about you and wine? He goes, Mom, he goes, you get all upset when you hear people drink real wine or drink a beer. I go, yeah, it's not scriptural. I'm not supposed to. And he goes, really? Have you read the word of God? <laughs> I think he was 15. I go, yes, yes, I have. And I know what it says. Do not be drunk. You know, you know the ones who always quote them. And do this and abstain from this and all that and I'm, he's like then let me ask you did Jesus drink real wine I go, well, no I'm pretty sure he drank grape juice <laughs> <laughs> now, it sounds silly now yeah. but you know you get these religious crazy things in your head yeah. and he really grape juice mom and I go yes and he goes then how could the wine skin break if it was grape juice Because if you pour new wine, grape juice, quote, quote, into a wine skin, it would not break because there's no fermentation. You're getting that. And he said, Mom, you're not putting the whole picture here together. He said, you need to get over this. Because it's a religious, this is a 15-year-old. It's a religious spirit telling wow. you wow. that everybody that drinks wine is going to hell. Amen. So I had to go to the back room and say, okay, the Holy Spirit is here. Right. <laughs> what, what is this? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to encourage you today is to understand Holy Spirit wants to take you to the back room and tell you some of this stuff. Now this this middle son was so much like his mother. Have y'all figured that out yet? <laughs> the other two were like perfect clones of their dad. Thought like their dad, acted like their dad, you know, everything. This one was in my face me. Okay, that's why I knew him so well. It was because he was. So everything in his life was living on the edge. As he grew up, he literally said, uh, he would tell Holy Spirit every morning, what are we doing today? Now, this was a child that owned his own corporation by 17. Uh, he ran crews. He did mission work all over the world. He would work for so many weeks and months so that he would have money to pay his own way to be a missionary all over the world. Uh, so, you know, I never knew where he was half the time. I just didn't. But we were so connected in the spirit that God would wake me up. 
So one night, God woke me up at, I can't remember the exact time, but we'll just say it's 2.16. And he woke me up and he said, you need to pray for Tekin. I said, okay. So I get up and it's war. For about an hour, it's full on, something's about to die, I need to pray. Now, I don't even know what country he's in. Okay, I know that sounds horrible because the mother doesn't know, but you'd have to understand him. He would let me know when he came back because he didn't want to bother me. So I'm praying, and I realize it's, he's in, his life is in danger. So about after an hour, the intercession's gone, and I said, yay, God, we're good. Okay, and you know what happened? The next morning at 6 o'clock, I called him. If he's going to wake me up, I'm going to wake him up. <laughs> and I said, what were you doing last night at 2.16? Oh, uh, you know, Mom, the usual. I go, no, no, try that stuff with me. What were you doing? He goes, well, it was fine. I had it under control. Okay, again, what were you doing? Well, at that season of his life, he was a youth pastor. And he had taken a group to a concert in the big city. And once they were finished with the concert, they went to the Dairy Queen to have a little meal. Well, one of the people that were with him traveling was um, an older kid that was from Lebanon. And he had become so zealous. He was born again, and he wanted to witness to everybody. And his usual witness was, you're going to hell if you don't accept Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so that Dairy Queen had a group of bikers, a gang of members that had come in. So this young man was witnessing to them. Okay, if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to hell. You can imagine how well that went over. And so the gang members went out to their vehicles to get their guns. And the manager saw it, locked the place down, had all of the youth group get behind the counter and call the police. So my time of intercession was the time that it started for where the police arrived. Okay. Now my son's take on it was I had it handled. It's not a big deal. It's no big deal. That's you, you just over worry on things. But that's how connected we were. What I found was that in 2004 this same young son was on a vacation with his wife of two years and she was seven months pregnant with their first baby and he is my extreme sports person so anything he wants to do he just thinks that's normal you know like you name it he's done it so he was jumping from a cliff with a life jacket on he was jumping from this cliff to just fall into the water, not to dive or do anything else, just for the thrill of falling 50 feet. Okay. Now, for the rest of us, that's not something we sign up for to do that. You know, but it would be the equivalent of me jumping off a coffee table for him. Okay, so it's like nothing to him. But something happened. When he jumped out, it looked like something hit him. And he doubled over and he fell into the water and he fell and it looked like he went in head first. Well, he didn't respond. He didn't come flipping up or anything. There was a neurosurgeon in 3RN's vacationing in that same cove and they were on him in a heartbeat. But they never got a heartbeat. They never got a breath. They never got anything. And the neurosurgeon told Steph, the daughter, our daughter-in-law, I'm pretty sure he broke his neck when he landed. Well, all of this, you know, in my faith, I was going to come and lay hands on him and he was going to be resurrected because God had work for him to do. So... Several, you know, all of this went on. I could go into all the details. The bottom line was, when the autopsy came back, it said, we really don't know why he died. There were no broken bones. There was nothing technically wrong with this perfectly healthy 27-year-old person. He had two bruises or contusions, one on his neck and one on his ribcage, 
probably caused by the life jacket. But he had no real water in his lungs. He didn't breathe when he hit the water. So something up here spiritually hit him. <clears throat> well, my assignment since I was 30 is Leviathan. Leviathan is all about pride and miscommunication, mm -hmm. twisting things. Remember my Leviathan one. And one of the things is he's always about fluidity. Leviathan is the principality that mimics Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Satan mimics Father God. He wants to be the source of everything you have in life. Baal mimics Jesus. He wants to be the executor of God's will to you. But Leviathan mimics Holy Spirit. So my whole life, my assignment has been, I can't get rid of Leviathan. Jesus will do that when he comes back. He says there are certain principalities that he alone will deal with. But he says you can put boundaries on them so that they may not cross those boundaries, all right? So that had been my assignment. It was also my son's assignment. So over this body of water, the attack is made. So even up to the funeral and all through that, uh, I kept believing for him to be resurrected. This would have been this kid, jump out of his casket and go, ta-da! <laughs> um, and it didn't happen. Finally, when I asked Holy Spirit through a lot of different things, I said, why didn't it happen? He said, well, Father God asked him if he wanted to come back. Because he's got a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. Father God asked him, and he said to him, not my will, but yours be done. And he chose to stay because God had need of him to do his earth. Now notice I'm telling you this whole story. And notice that there are very few emotions coming through. Okay. Yes. You need to understand why. And it's not because I'm really good at this or I lack emotions. It's because every step of the journey, Holy Spirit would say, you need to be healed from this. Because the enemy is using this to destroy your life, your ministry, your family's ministry, and this baby boy that's coming. So you have a choice. You can stay in soul grief for the rest of your life. Where everything that happens to you goes through this filter of I lost my, the one that's like me. Are you listening? Or you can give that to me in an inner healing and let me change the tags. He says, because what the enemy means for evil, I will switch to good. You hear that a lot, but the reality is, is it a demonstrated thing in your life? Are you free of that grief? So what I had to do is, and we'll talk tomorrow about it, the healing code, lots of things that I had to do to say, here's my grief. I want to be lost in it. And he said, no, that's what the enemy's plan for you is. My plan is that we're going to change what he meant for evil to good. So every time you relay that story, those emotional and chemical tags that were attached to that memory no longer hold deep grief because you gave them to me and I switched them. And now you can actually be in joy. You know this kid's having a lot more fun than I am. He's getting to do a lot of things. I can just see him. I mean... He stopped asking me the questions, and now Moses and Elijah and all the rest of them. <laughs> you get that? But the enemy cannot use that incident against me. 
So what we're wanting to bring to you is that kind of healing. Where you're just, because this is what God needs. Intercessors are God's chosen people to go out farther than anybody else. They go out, in my mind, farther than the prophets go. Because they're willing to go out to where God's sending those light packages in. <clears throat> okay. The problem is intercessors didn't get instructed on what they're supposed to do with those light packages from God. So, so many of them took ownership of it. And they said, it's my package. And I need to guard it all the way back to earth. And God says, no, you're just the guard so the enemy can't get the package. You're taking the package to the pastor or the evangelist or the businessman or whatever. Don't open it up. You just guard it. Do you see? You guard it from the enemy who's trying to kill the package getting there. So why is that important? It's important because your ability to guard God's packages is highly influenced by what sounds are coming out of you. And if what's coming out of you are wounds, pain, uh, destructive memories, then when you try to guard that package, all the enemy has to do is trigger one of those things. And you're not a very good package guarder anymore. So he needs intercessors to be on a whole different level of freedom so that what's in you is only the sound of God. What's in you is only the frequency of heaven. What's in you is only the glory. And when the enemy tries to bring the other stuff, you can recognize it and say, no, I already dealt with that. So many times, you know, the, the young man that was my grandson to be, that's his dad shifted from earth to heaven that day. He's now 17 years old. Spitting image. Praise God. Not so much for his parents. <laughs> Spitting image <laughs> of his dad. Praise God. He'll do the mannerisms that he never saw. Okay. So the enemy will often want to come in and go, see, I, I got you. I robbed you. He never saw that. And I go, well, you're not looking at it from my point of view. Yeah. He's watching everything. He's yeah. involved in everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a whole good day. And so his mother remarried, and they now have five kids. I told him that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the inheritance. The enemy tried to steal one son, but I got back hundreds. So there are things in your life as an intercessor that the enemy knows every time God sends you on a big assignment, all he has to do is trigger that. And you're done. You're done. I can't trust you. You won't be able to follow through. You'll pray, but the victory won't be there because the sounds of the enemy are still within you. Okay? So I wanted you to have a little bit of my testimony um, so that you can understand. I really do get it, okay? But we have to realize, God, show us. Shine that light on us, you know? Do you want to carry that sound? I mean, I know you think you're hiding it from everybody, but you're not. You're not. So I want to wrap it up by handing out the brush up thing. Um, Stacy, do you have any instructions other than that? Okay. No, it'll just holy. I would just say Wait pray. I'm sorry. I would just say when you get the handout, just pray. 
before you start writing, because I know you guys are awesome at praying, Holy Spirit, highlight to me anything that um, I need to take care of. And it'll just be a quick, just like she said, don't think about it too long. If it's like, mm, yep, check, mm -hmm, yep, check. So just circle those, check those, whatever, and then we're going to be using that questionnaire a little bit later tonight to bring some healing. Okay? So as she's passing that out, let me pray for you. Okay? One of the things that I think intercessors should do is pray. <laughs> <laughs> novelty, novelty. Uh, but I've learned that. We are praying not only as individuals, we're praying as the body of Christ. So it's just like in any body. If I've got a piece of my body that's not doing well, it messes up my whole body. Right. Okay. So what I want to do is if I've gained victory over something and somebody else in the body still wrestling with that, I want to send my victories. Amen. My anointing, right. right. my authority to right. those that are wrestling with it. That's right. <laughs> because that's how we overcome. Amen. It's by our testimony mm -hmm. and by the word and the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. So he's wanting you today, there are certain victories that I've had that I've overcome. Okay. There are certain victories you've had that you've overcome that I may still need. So what we do is when we pray in the Spirit, when we do that, we are allowing Holy Spirit to link us up as a body. It's got all these nice, fancy, scientific words. We're entangled and we're interconnected. But the reality is we are not going to be able to overcome the enemy as individuals mm -hmm. on, on big now. things. Come on now. You can do it for you individually. But if you want to take the city, you can't do it individually. You have to have the body. And if we fight each other and disagree with each other and hate each other, we're in autoimmune disease. You realize that? Or we let this part of our body have cancer and we go, well, that's your problem. No, if it's in your body, it's your problem. So I'm going to pray for you that you will let Holy Spirit's light come in and show you some of that, okay? So, Father God, we just come, and we come as a remnant. We come as a, a part of the body. But we recognize that you have work you want to do here on these two days. You have work you want to bring to these particular intercessors that is so much farther and greater than anything they've ever imagined they have they have been in many many assignments but they have never touched the levels you want them to touch so father god we just ask right now as we go into this beginning time of deliverance and inner healing that you link together the godly parts of us the godly parts of us we put the blood shield up so that I don't give to anyone anything that's not from you. Yeah. It has to go through that blood barrier. Yeah. So, Father, we just put the blood shields up and we say, but let her victory. Let her victory over grief. Okay. Let her victory over betrayal. Let her victory over all these things that she has gained. Come and touch me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, yes, Lord. Forgiveness, Father. Let it touch me. Learning how to forgive on such a level. Now, Father God, I thank you that your light has been given permission to shine into each of us. And as we see this questionnaire, we will literally be brutally honest and check everything that you're showing is in our lineage. I may not have done it, but it's in my lineage. It's in somewhere in there and I don't even know about it. Some may have every one of them checked. But God, give us the courage yeah. as intercessors to say we realize 
we can't carry your packages and guard them if we're letting the enemy still use us. Yeah. So, Holy Spirit, come. Do supernatural quick work. Supernatural quick work. And while we take this time from now till this evening, I pray that they rest quickly. That they rest with a supernatural thing. Father, you are bringing these intercessors into a new quantum space. New dimensions that they have not yet touched. And Father, what that means is, it's learning to carry spiritual weight. That's what the kavod of God is. It's spiritual weight. So when you carry this spiritual weight, it will overwhelm you physically until your spiritual muscles get strong enough to carry it. And then you can move to the next thing and the next thing. So Father, I hear today, you are saying to each person, I'm increasing your faith so your spiritual faith muscles can carry a heavier spiritual glory weight. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 to that you, you think about yourself but you also think of so many others that oh man I wish they could hear this oh I wish they could hear this you know and so um, is this for today and I'll, I beg your pardon are we supposed to do this after the, this and then we're going to work on it tonight yes that's for tonight Thank you. fill that out um, you know like during dinner or what have you and then when we come back at 7 which you know, you've got a couple of hours. Um, um, you'll be ready. Okay, you'll be ready. Um, <laughs> you know, but I just thought about how people say my everything I have is like a boot camp. I said, no, no. What's that about? <laughs> it's just that God is such a big God. Yes, he is. And he's got so much to give us. You know, and I try to get it all in one week. <laughs> Amen. You said yesterday that we needed to climb the mountain higher. Amen. Okay, and what what I saw 
was that a wave, a tsunami wave was coming in. And I, I know all about rock and roll, whatever. I'm not talking about that. I was thinking of what Liberty said about Florida being the water. Mm -hmm. But Yolanda said, God wants us to go higher. Yes. And we cannot go higher if we don't lay aside all these weights that are holding us down. Absolutely. And that's the purpose of this. Absolutely. Amen. We're here <clears throat> to get rid of the weights that weigh us down, but also that we can um, go. I heard three things uh, in the last two, maybe two, three weeks coming into this. Um, and one was, you know, I heard freedom, 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 and that was the beginning. And then as we was having 6 a.m. prayer uh, every morning, I heard, I had, I heard prepare, prepare, prepare. This is the way I heard it three times. Then I heard harvest, harvest, harvest. God is preparing us for the harvest. We have to be. No, nobody was ready for 2020. No. The church wasn't ready for 2020. The ancestors weren't ready. And then 2021 came. Lord have mercy. You know. And I, you know, to the point that I had intercessors in 2021 calling and saying, Arabella, you know, please pray. I went to this conference and, I, and I'm just, you know, concerned. I want to make sure, you know, just pray, you know, because I don't want anyone to get sick or what have you. I said, sweetheart, I said, why would you even think that? Well, you know, people have, that's happened. I said, no. I said, the only reason that that comes to you is because of what you know. Don't allow the enemy to use what you know against you. You're, you're in 2021, and because of you, what you know that happened in 2020, you're saying, possibly, could this happen now? Isn't that interesting? How the enemy uses your past knowledge to bring fear. Don't line up and agree with nothing from the enemy. Just because it happened once does not mean it's going to happen again. It will if you agree with it, though. It will if you put your faith in it. It's nothing like the faith that God gives us. We only need a mustard seed. We take that and put it in agreement with what the enemy is saying. What do you think is going to happen? Be not ignorant of the enemy devices. He is always at it. But God is greater. Ah! God is greater. Amen. Hallelujah. God is greater. Well, I tell you what. I'm going to do what I did last night because it works. <laughs> I'm going to put this basket right here. And um, we did a we did a registration, uh, but there's you know we do we we do registrations, but I do what God say. So, um, and God told me to do a registration, but if you're if it but but at, as well, um, I will never tell a person they can't come because they don't have registration. And so they walk in that door and they say, well, I really don't you know whatever. I say, well, baby, just get a seat. <laughs> Let God bless you. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah, Thank Jesus. You. This don't belong to us. This is God's. Oh, this don't belong to You know, when I was putting together, let me tell you, and, I, I'm, not, I, and I'm not, man, Wesley need 10. <laughs> I know Wesley comes up. Everybody, I'm going to run to the car and get 10. 
concerning Je Jezebel's spirit uh, a couple of days, two or three days ago, whatever. And and I'm just, you know, and I said, you know, I never, I never did make this available to anyone. And this is the enemy. Yeah, Arabella. You, you, you need to be careful about putting your information out there. What if somebody, what if somebody take it and steal it and do something with it? But it don't belong to me. Right. It don't belong to me. I thought I was saying for me, God's got one voice. And if you tune into him, he talks to all of us. Amen. Yeah, he does. He ain't got no respect to person. Y'all better, better wake up on that one, man. That don't work. Right. We gotta click into who God really is. Yeah. We got to really click into who he really is and get away from all this extra stuff and all this stuff that floats around in the air. You know, a bunch of craziness. If, if I would have, maybe I wasn't supposed to, but if I had the whole chapter, because it's going to be a book, if it was all ready for you guys to have, I, my plan was to have it all ready and just give you a copy. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, it doesn't belong to me. It's about you getting free, getting the information, getting free, and getting what you need. Aside from that, there's a whole lot of information out on everything. Yes. You just need to look into, you know, you just need to look for it. It's available. Yeah. It's not what you know. It's you knowing where to go get what you need. Brilliant. It's a library out there, let me tell you. It's amazing. There is a library out there. All of it ain't true. Um, all of it, so a lot of it is twisted. But when the Bible says that, God says, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. You just need to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Not just searching for, because you're searching. Um, but hunger and thirst for righteousness is a difference. Holy Spirit, Lord spoke to me one day because you know the Holy Spirit always wants to steal. I mean, the enemy always wants to steal and pervert and all that kind of stuff. That's the only thing you know how to do. So, you know, in the midst of a person receiving tongues and praying in the Spirit, you know, the enemy comes and lies and says, are you sure that was from God? <laughs> you sure that was from God? Well, God says, Arabella, if you ask me for something, you're going to receive from me? You just need to ask him. Amen. Don't just like float around like a butterfly, you know, seeing who you're going to sting or whatever they got. <laughs> Don't just float around like a butterfly. Be intentional. Be intentional. Go before the Lord. Ask Father God in the name of Jesus. Reveal this mystery to me. Amen. Share with me who you are. Give me more of you. Explain. Order my steps. Oh, Lord, that's a big one. Glory to God. Ask Father. Ask your Father God, creator of heaven and earth. Your creator. And when you ask him, you'll receive from him. Glory to God. Trust the Holy Spirit in that. He said you, you pray in English because you don't trust the Holy Spirit to pray in tongues. Lord, have mercy. You pray in English because you, you understand English, and so you pray in English. That way you're in control. Yeah. 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 Then you can <clears throat> That's good. You tell God all about it like you don't know. 
in English. But if you truly trust the Holy Spirit, you surrender and submit and allow the Holy Spirit to pray on your behalf. Oh my goodness. No higher trust, you know, is that you just pray in the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to do it. But you don't trust when you've got to pray English. When you don't even necessarily know how to pray. As the scripture said, you don't even know how to pray, but you just got to pray in English. I, I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about me. <laughs> I lived that one. It took me about six, about three hours, three by six hours to break through not praying in English. This is about 30 years ago. <laughs> but after 30 years or longer, something like that, I went in to do my little routine, a little prayer routine, you know. You go in your room and you close up. And you got your, your tablet and your pen and your Bibles and all your little study stuff and you're waiting to hear from God. And you go in and you, you got your, you know, you're going to pray your word and you're going to, you, you know, you got your little routine. And I walk in to pray, and the Holy Spirit say, I don't want you to pray any English today. Just pray in the wow. Spirit. Wow. Well, <laughs> like, but you know, I'm going to pray a word. You know, I'm going to, you know, I had to explain. <laughs> you know, I had to get past my flesh. You know, that had had control of things there. Because even though it was a word and this, this, and this, I was still in, I did it, you know. So, so I would start praying in the spirit, and my mind was just a talking. I, you know, let me tell it. You know, I need to tell him about this. <laughs> I need to tell him about this. And I need to tell him about this. You know, it's like, which, what? <laughs> God is so much greater. He already knew before you went in there to pray. <clears throat> Scripture says he knows the perfect will. He knows what you already need. How about this? I told Wesley, I said, I'll never forget it. You know, I, I, the older I get, the more I see things. I don't know if it's got anything to do with age, but, <laughs> you know. I told Wesley, I said, Wesley, what if all this is about obedience? You know, like it was, I was saying it like, like God couldn't hear me or so like I was whispering. <laughs> I was whispering. Like, <laughs> I said, what if this all, what if all of this is all of this all? It really is all about obedience. God, don't, God can do everything that he asks you to do. He asks you to partner with him. Because in the garden, oh, you got to hear Dr. Yolanda talk about the garden. Because in, <laughs> in the garden, you know, Adam and Eve was given certain instructions. And they just needed to obey those instructions. And they did not obey the instructions. And they lost, and I'm making it real simple. They lost dominion. They lost everything. Because they just disobeyed one time. Your grace worship unto the Lord is to obey him. So what has he been doing ever since then? It's all about obedience. He can move the mountain. You guys, God squad, and all you guys that are standing for your regents and praying and doing this and all this kind of stuff. If you can manage to get in unity and obedience, my God. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, glory to God. Man, I'm telling you.
telling you, he can ship and move mountains. He will do it. He can work through that. He can't work through disobedience. He can't work through disobedience. He can't work through division. You know, but he can do so much otherwise. Amen. I love y'all. God loves you so much more than I do. Amen. So this basket is here for you to place your offering in. There's an envelope and a card in your in your folders. And Deanna has um Deanna, 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 Deanna has some more, there's some more cards up there if you need them. Also, um, can you put some cards, offering cards right here, baby girl? <clears throat> and then we can put some up here. You know, really, Wesley likes... Yeah, uh, just put your um, your name and contact information uh, so that we um, we can uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, if you need it for um, you know contribution um, for taxes, uh, we're five zero one six three. So you can uh, your donations are tax deductible. Uh, but just give us uh, your information on the call. If it's check, just make it up to rise up on United Voice. Um, we have also uh, PayPal, takes to give, it's on the card, um, cash out. It's all on the all card. The card. Yeah. Um, and if you want to use your credit card, there's the place ways to give that. To yeah. put that information. So, in. so um, uh, we'll be back at seven dinner, and then we I, I can, we don't we we do not provide dinner, and you know we probably should switch it and provide dinner dinner instead of lunch. <laughs> it's, but it doesn't matter. Traffic is still the same all day long. So um, um, what I would suggest there is a uh, this is this is Orange South Orange Blossom Trail. If you go to the left to the left and go up about a mile and a half, two miles. There is on the left hand side is a wood a little diner like um, country diner it has really good food. Um, it's right there on the left at the traffic light across the street from the racetrack. Okay, if you keep going about another mile or so, you'll run into a um, a uh, Popeyes a. A Wendy's. Um, Several fast food. There's Wawa down there. There's Publix. That's where the Publix is, and a Pizza Hut, and all that plaza, and all the It's on the left hand side, and then on the other side is some Mexican restaurants. If you want to go the opposite direction, you can go straight down Orange Blossom Trail, and then on Polk Line Road, that takes you to the check-in gate. There's some eating places also in that area. Seven miles. Seven miles. Yeah, that's a little bit farther. It's a little farther. But, but this is five o'clock traffic. Yeah. So don't go far anywhere. Because <laughs> it really, it, it, you basically are in traffic for an hour. If you go more than 10 miles, you're in traffic for an hour. Wasn't it a blessing? One, um, I think Jesse. Jesse? Yes. Jess. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't Jess a blessing for worship? Yeah. I mean, she has been amazing all the day long. Amen. And um, we're excited. Um, we're believing God that she's going to be back with us. <laughs> she's going to be here the rest of the week. Praise God. Well, all right. Praise God. Father God, we just thank you for the word that you have released unto us this afternoon. We thank you for the whole day, Lord. You have just came in your presence. We're just over. We're just over the top blessed and thankful for all that you've done and given unto us. 
We don't take it for granted, Father. But we ask that you would meet us again. Oh, God, minister unto us in our natural bodies with food. Give us strength and bring us back to meet and receive to you from you spiritually again on tonight. In the name, and Father, bless and minister to those, help those that are trying to get here, that are on their way and trying to get here, that have a heart to be here, Father God. You know what, Lord? I know that they don't have to be here because you can go where they are and do just as much. But God, you are saying, hallelujah, for them to be here if you place them in their spirit. And God, we just thank you right now. We command all obstacles and hindrances to be removed. Be removed. Be removed in Jesus' name. And we thank you right now, Father God. Amen and amen.